Hey there guys and welcome to your 8th video on hacking with SQL injection. In this video we're just going to go over a couple more small but pretty important things regarding the union statement and just general good practice for SQL injection. So here we go. So the first thing we're going to look at in this video is a simple but significant change that I've made to the find a user page. Uh, in the previous video, you'll notice that we managed to uh, dump the entire users table of their usernames and their passwords with one simple SQL injection query. Uh, that's not going to really be possible anymore because of this uh, change that I've made right here. Instead of just looping through all of the users that were returned from the query and outputting their username and their email address, I've changed it so that only one user is going to have their email address and username output to the browser. Uh, even if more than one uh, user is returned from the query, only one user is actually going to be outputted to the page. So uh, we can take a look at how that works in our find a user page now. So over here in our find a user page, I can actually demonstrate how this new server side scripting works. Uh, if we try to input the same SQL injection union statement that we used in the previous video, we use x as our dummy data, close our encapsulation, then use union select 1, username 3, and password. And we're going to select those from the users table. And uh, now if we try to submit this, what used to happen on this page was that it would output the entire users database because we haven't actually specified any particular user to output. It's just outputting all of them at once. But if we submit this now, you'll see that even though we did ask it to output all of the users, it's only going to output one, because I mean, any legitimate request to this page is only going to need one user to be output. For example, if someone types in test2, they only need test2's information to be output and no one else's. So obviously the server side script should be intelligent enough to realize this, and generally in any good production web server, it will be, and these kind of uh, SQL union attacks can be made a little more difficult by this. One of the main issues that can arise from a page being designed in this way is that if the dummy data that you actually enter before your union statement is a user in the database, or is a valid result in the database, that's all that's going to be output. All the union statement is really doing is selecting more data from the database and adding that on to the end of the data that's already been selected. So if we try to put in test1, or actually no, if we try to put in test3 as our dummy data and then use a union to also select the username, uh, no we're going to select 1, again username 3 and password from users. What we would expect to happen here is that we're going to get test1's username and password output again because we've unioned this onto the end of the query. But if we submit this, you'll see that all we've gotten out is username test3 and email address test3 at gmail.com. That's because the dummy data that was entered, test3, was actually valid. So whenever we added uh, test1's username and password to the end of the SQL query, that wasn't output because again only one user should be output at a time and in this case the first one that was selected from the database was test3. So generally when you're using SQL injection you're going to want to make sure that the dummy data you're entering isn't something that could actually be a valid result in the table. Uh, in this case you could just you know enter some gibberish uh, and then do union select one username 3 password from users and that'll give you test 1 and this email or this password output which is uh, that's just done because obviously the gibberish that we entered as our dummy data wasn't actually a result in the table so the first real result we got back was from our union statement however again if we tried entering test 4 as our dummy data followed by union select one two three four and I put in this all we get out is the username test4 and email address test4 at test.com so generally when you're using SQL injection you're going to want to input your dummy data as something that can definitely not be uh, definitely not return a valid result from the table uh, if you're searching for an integer 
in the table, such as you know a user ID one, two, three, or four. A good way to do this is to use negative numbers as your dummy data. You could use minus ten as your dummy data instead of say three, which might actually be a valid user ID in the table. Or if you're so uh, if you're searching for an integer, you can also just use null, which is just going to select. Uh, a user who has an empty username, which chances are no one in the table is going to have an empty username. So this will usually work as good dummy data. So the last thing we're going to go over today is something that's pretty simple but can actually uh, cause a big problem for people who are new to SQL injection and especially with the union statement. So what the union statement actually does in SQL is that it queries the database gets a result set and adds that on to uh, the result set of a select query which has already been run. Uh, in this case, uh, what's actually happening is we're inputting our dummy data, then uh, our union statement, and the union statement is being added on to the end of the result set from the dummy data. Uh, this is pretty much what we want to happen, but the problem is, if the types of data being returned from the union statement don't match the types of data being returned from the original uh, select statement, then this can cause an error depending on the database software and the type of web server that's being used. For example, uh, if the username being returned is a string and you try to replace that with data that's an integer, uh, this can cause an error because there's a type mismatch. You're trying to replace or you're trying to append a uh, integer into a column that was originally a string. This is actually pretty easily solved. Uh, when you're using union, you should always use union all. Uh, if we type in our dummy data x, closer data encapsulation, and use a general uh, union statement again, but this time we're going to change it and select union all. Instead of just regular old union select, we're actually going to use union all select 1, 2, 3, and 4. And what union all does is that it selects and appends the results of this select query onto the results of the original query without worrying about the types of data. You can throw an integer into a string column, or you can throw a string into an integer column, dates, whatever, uh, and it won't give you any type mismatch errors, which is always useful when you're trying to do SQL injection. Uh, if we submit this, you can see that we got two and four outputted just fine. So that's all we're gonna go over today, guys. Uh, this may have been a pretty, I don't know, not very exciting tutorial, but it's stuff that you have to know for SQL injection, and especially if you're using the union statement, uh, it's pretty important. Again, just to recap, uh, if you're using dummy data, make sure that your dummy data isn't going to select a valid result from the database. And the second thing we went over is that if you're going to use union, you're generally going to want to use union all instead of just union select, because uh, union all doesn't worry about types like strings and integers, that kind of stuff. It'll just select whatever you want it to select without any issues. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial, guys.